The Lippo Group is one of Indonesia's biggest business conglomerates, attaining a $3 billion income per annum. It controls $15 billion of assets in the retail, banking, natural resources, hospitality, real estate, and healthcare sectors. They employ 35,000 employees across Asia, operating property, financial and medical services, and medium businesses. Investments have been made by multiple nations, including Indonesia, Singapore, China, Hong Kong, the United States, and Australia, among others. The group has been involved in legal disputes with business rivals and former partners, and has been subject to waves of persecution and violence by those suspicious of their business success, due to being a Chinese business in multicultural Indonesia. Makta Reali founded the Lipo Group and remains CEO to this day. He accrued wealth through banking. Before diversifying the Lipo Group services into the variety it offers currently, James Reali is Makta's son and currently serves as the chairman for the group Indonesia Operations and is deputy chairman of the group. In 1977, he entered into the American business community and has since formed his career as a respected and successful business leader, albeit one short audit in some controversy. The activities and practices of Riyadi have caused a multitude of issues for himself and the Lippo Group. The key issues of discussion are those of cultural, ethical and leadership natures. Riyadi has received accusations of evangelization and suffered poor diversity management within the business, inhibiting strengths on the cultural front. From an ethics perspective, illegal conduct of business and misuse of lobbying demonstrated through the Clinton political scandal have been detrimental to corporate social responsibility efforts and have had a lasting impact on his image. These both have bearing on his persona and ability as a leader, which despite being strong in a variety of areas, showcased a lack of pivotal leadership characteristics such as honesty and integrity. Since the Lippo Group operates internationally, the global managers of the business must be informed about international developments, respect and value foreign cultures, and must be aware of regional developments in a changing world. The issue of control within the Lippo Group suggests that James Riardi can monitor performance within the business and take corrective action to enhance productivity. The Lippo Group can implement an intrinsic reward system to motivate workers to a higher work rate and, from this, achieve a higher productivity. From acknowledging lessons of experience, Riyadi must support innovation and continuous change to help the Lippo Group perform well in the modern world's changing environment. Thus, the problem at hand is that these factors have had detrimental effects on both the Lippo Group's image in regards to its cultural and ethical positions and James Riyadi's own ability to lead effectively. For the benefit of the business, these impediments need to be resolved so as it can function again at optimal output, at least in these regards. The commissioning of the action plans is intended to cater for the issues in culture, ethics and leadership based on the literature theories of each of these fields and the particular circumstances in the case of Riyadi and the Lippo Group. The issue of culture and cultural clashes in regards to James Riyadi often stemmed from both his Chinese descent and him being a devout evangelical Christian and the perceptions these character traits have on him as a businessman operating in Indonesia. Due to the Lippo Group's creation of the Lippo Katowice Village, which includes a university and an international school, as well as the Riyadi family's Palita Halapan Education Foundation, which funds schools and teachers' colleges throughout Indonesia, many Indonesians are wary of Riyadi's influence in education in Indonesia with regards to his faith. There has been documentation of Riyadi sharing his religious beliefs and devotions with students and staff at the Palita Halapan University, which has also led to the assumption that Riyadi is trying to evangelize students, as well as villages in the Lippo Katowice Village, and staff of the Lippo Group, leading to criticism from the predominantly Muslim country. Shermahorn et al. defined managing diversity as building an inclusive work environment that allows everyone to reach their full potential. R. Roosevelt Thomas Jr. theorised that successful management of diversity relies on three leadership approaches, affirmative action, valuing differences, and managing diversity. Affirmative action involves creating upward mobility for minority groups and involves leaders committing their organisation to the hiring and advancement of these minority groups. Valuing differences involves building quality relationships with respect for diversity, which is done through leadership committing the organisation to education and training programs designed to aid people understand and respect individual differences. Managing diversity involves realising the full potential of diverse human resources, involving leadership committing the organisation to changing its internal culture 
to empower and include all people regardless of individual differences. These cultural issues within the case study can all be traced back to poor diversity management by Riyadi and the LIPO group. Someone who is diversity mature can accept responsibility for improving their own performance, accept responsibility for improving performance of their organisation, understand themselves and their organisation, understand important diversity concepts, make decisions involving differences based on ability to meet job requirements, understand that diversity is complex and accompanied by tensions, are able to cope with tensions when dealing with diversity, are willing to challenge the way things are, and are willing to learn continuously. Diverse workplaces are an advantage of organisations as they provide a wide variety of talents, ideas and viewpoints that are critical for solving complex problems present in a highly competitive and uncertain environment. Diverse workplaces also provide a diverse workforce that can more easily match needs and expectations of consumers and suppliers. Organisations that successfully manage diversity often do so because they have a diversity mission in place as well as an organisational mission. Managing diversity is a challenge for both the individual and the organisation. For the individual, it means accepting the goal of diversity maturity. For the organisation, it involves committing leadership to making fundamental changes in organisational culture, guiding mission and practices, based on participation, involvement and empowerment of all staff. While James Riardi is free to practice his religion of Christianity, it is poor cultural management on his part to attempt to force his beliefs onto staff. Instead, he should have embraced his workplace diversity and attempted to harness it to his and the LIPO group's advantage. The strategic objective for culture is to form a new workplace philosophy in the LIPO group to implement training and education programs for both staff and managers in order to promote diversity and cultural relativism, particularly for international relations, within the workplace and avoid those in positions of power, such as Riyadi, from imposing their views on others. The first action plan for culture is education and training programs for staff. This would be a short-term plan over the course of three months. These programs would be the responsibility of management to carry out and would require the resources of time and the costs of external trainers. All employees would be required to take part in group workshops to learn respect for fellow staff and see the benefits of teamwork, particularly within diverse teams in an organisation. Barriers to success for this plan would include unwilling and closed-minded staff. The second action plan is holding diversity management workshops for managers of the LIPO group. This would be a medium-term plan over the course of six to eight months due to the complex and challenging nature of managing diversity. The workshops would be the responsibility of organisation leaders to run and would require the resources of time and the cost of external trainers. They would specifically focus on teaching managers about the diversity mature checklist mentioned previously. Barriers to success would include managers who are not dedicated to diversity improvement in the organisation. The third action plan is ensuring ongoing support of employees to shift internal culture to be inclusive and respectful. This would be a long-term, ongoing plan and involve continued follow-up by managers of staff and other management personnel. The main resource of this plan is time, and the follow-up would be used to identify when education and training sessions are again required to ensure all staff know what is expected of them. Barriers to success for this plan is management and staff who are not committed to cultural change in the organisation. Of relevance is the illegal contributions made by James Riardi, among others, to the Democratic National Committee as part of Bill Clinton's 1996 presidential campaign, and the incredible $8.6 million fine imposed upon Mr Riardi as a result. A failure to adhere to ethics tarnished the worldwide reputation of the LiPo Group, as well as Mr Riardi's standing as a businessman. In an attempt to understand the motives of Mr Riardi, one must consider the individualism view of ethics. This is defined as an ethical theory committed to the advancement of personal long-term self-interests, which in the corporate world are often intrinsically linked to that of an organization. Theoretically, this serves as a drive against cheating and lying in the short term for long-term gain. As in a competitive environment, such as the corporate world, if everyone acts dishonestly and cheats on one another, no one will make any continued gain. Hence, this type of behavior is a long-term detriment and pursuing legal and moral individualistic goals is the best way forward. In practice, however, there is a completely different story. As discussed by Hilger in his 1989 article, Whatever Happened to Ethics in Business and in Business Schools, individualistic views of ethics will often lead to a solely financial focus and often disregard the effects of one's actions on other individuals. Hilgert states that one corporate commentator informed him that this view will often lead to businessmen acting in a way that runs roughshod over other individuals to achieve their objectives. The crimes of James Riardi certainly confirmed this practical application of the individualism view. He used money in an attempt to bolster the campaign of Bill Clinton and influence the outcome of the US election to serve his own interests in the United States. 
Hence, he represents and highlights the pitfalls of this view on ethics. Applying further theory, top managers can and should serve as forces of ethical guidance within an organisation. With the power to shape both the organisation's moral and legal objectives and tone, top managers must be the epitome of daily adherence to pure ethics, and they must continue to demonstrate a great understanding of its important principles. Applying this to Mr. Riardi, his role as a top manager within the Lippo Group meant that he should have served as an ethical role model. However, his actions set a poor example of the correct ways of conducting business, both morally and legally. In conjunction, applying the theoretical aspects of corporate social responsibility and lobbying further highlight Mr. Riardi's unethical behaviour. Corporate social responsibility being the obligation of the organisation to act in a way that serves both its own interests and the interests of its stakeholders is often put into practice through the process of lobbying. By expressing their opinions and preferences to government officials, organisations attempt to push their own agenda and further their own self-interests. However, lobbying can often lead to bribes, or in the case of Mr. Riardi, illegal contributions to political campaigns, which represent a huge contravention of corporate social responsibility. The harsh penalties imposed on James Riardi serve as a reminder of the unethical nature of improper lobbying. The strategic objective for ethics is to update the workplace's policies and procedures regarding ethics in line with modern standards. Through the implementation of such measures as whistleblowers, ethics training, and a code of ethics to avoid contravention of corporate social responsibility by those in prominent positions such as James Riardi. An action plan to account for both ethics and corporate social responsibility is made up of a short-term, a medium-term and a long-term aspect to ensure its correct implementation. In the short term, conducting ethics training for all staff members within the organisation will rectify any immediate issues. Using appropriate funding, the financial and opportunity costs arising out of lost productivity will be offset by improved knowledge of the importance of ethics in the long term, hopefully counteracting the possibility of stubborn or disinterested staff. Under the responsibility of both management and human resources, the time frame for this short-term plan is within six months. The medium-term plan is the design and implementation of a code of ethics by management staff using appropriate funding. Facing the same stubborn staff barriers as the ethics training, this will cement ethical guidelines to be followed within the organisation, to be implemented within six to 12 months. The ongoing long-term plan for the organisation is continued refinement of this code and continued advertising within the organisation of the importance of ethics, despite the potential for lesser profit. Consultancy with the legal profession may aid in the refinement of this code. James Riardi is the chairman and son of the founder of Lippo, and was involved in a business scandal where he was fined $8.6 million for illegal US political campaign contributions. This reflected the integral relationship between leadership and brand image, as this contentious leadership issue within one of the largest organisations in Asia greatly impacted upon its social and business reputation. Riardi is also a controversial business figure as he is vocal in his evangelical Christian faith and incorporates his faith into communication with staff. This is contentious in the Chinese business world and exemplifies issues that can occur under leadership from a cultural religious minority. Despite this, Lippo continued to grow and develop at a rapid rate, branching out its business portfolio to extend across financial, retail, education, infrastructure, investment and property sectors. The diversification and subsequent financial success of Lippo reflects accomplished management and direction coming from a good leader of change. There is a raft of management philosophy that exists behind the issue of leadership, which should be explored in order to understand the relationship between practice and theory. Leading is defined as the process of inspiring others, arousing enthusiasm and directing efforts towards organisational goals. Effective leadership is made up of three essential key activities, planning, organising and controlling. With leadership comes power. Power over people, vision and execution within an organisation. Leadership theory dictates that there are several types of positional power. Reward power, the ability to influence activities and attitudes through incentives. Coercive power, the ability to enforce certain activities and attitudes through consequences. And legitimate power, the ability to influence through authority. This is perhaps the most relevant to the case study. While we do not know the intricacies of Riyadi's use of reward and coercive power, his positional power as chairman and son of the founder gives him great leadership authority within Lippo. With significant power as an individual and significant international power as an organisation comes great responsibility, which is what makes effective and moral leadership so essential for LIPO. Traditionally called the great person theory, there is a management notion that there are a set of universal traits or personal characteristics that make a successful leader. 
As the leader of a successful business conglomerate with a vast range of different ventures, Riadi must demonstrate many of these leadership traits. The rapid growth of Lupo reveals that Riadi possesses creativity, business knowledge and motivation in order to have achieved success in such a competitive and complex marketplace. Riadi's political scandal, on the other hand, displays perhaps, perhaps a lacking in honesty and integrity. However, the success of Lupo speaks volumes on what powerful leadership traits he does have. There are a range of different forms of leadership that are contained in theory. There's Fiedler's contingency model, which is based on the notion that effective leading should be suited to its situational demands. Hersey Blanchard's situational leadership model suggests that successful leaders adapt according to the maturity and readiness of their employees. House's path goal leadership theory purports that effective leadership clarifies paths through which employees can achieve both work-related and personal goals. And lastly, Room Jago leader participation is a model designed to assist leaders to choose methods of decision making that suits their unique situational context. Riyadi would have used these contingency approaches in favour of more stagnant traditional leadership approaches to lead an organisation like Lipo in the ever-changing and dynamic business world. Navigating through changing circumstances requires strong leadership. Lipo has experienced much change since its establishment, through controversy and scandal and its ever-developing brand image and scope. Leadership to create new ways of approaching change should include a number of theoretical characteristics – vision, charisma, empowerment, integrity and intellectual stimulation. While the subject of Riyadi's integrity is still contentious, the successful transformation of Lippo from a purely banking-oriented organisation to what it is now demonstrates Riyadi's successful approach to change leadership. Lippo is also following a more social welfare-oriented direction. This demonstrates a vision and empowerment for Lippo to be more active social justice changes in the international community. The continuously changing direction of Lippo therefore requires an effective driver or leader, competent in leading healthy transformation through the discussed characteristics. While the subject of Riyadi's integrity is still contentious, the successful transformation of Lippo from a purely banking-oriented organisation to what it is now demonstrates Riyadi's successful approach to change leadership. Lippo is also following a more social welfare-oriented direction. This demonstrates a vision and empowerment for Lippo to be more active social justice changes in the international community. The continuously changing direction of Lippo therefore requires an effective driver or leader, competent in leading healthy transformation through the discussed characteristics. The strategic objective for leadership is modernising workplace practices and policies regarding leadership to instigate a healthier and more productive growth and management system that develops personal relations and leadership skills, particularly in adaptability, amongst managers and subordinates. The action plan aims to create a leadership style that's based around morale and implementing policies to support this. The short-term tasks that make up the action plan are identifying company leadership objectives, undertaking a self-assessment of current leadership practices, and employing external leadership consultants to conduct an independent leadership assessment. The time frame for these tasks is between one to six months and should be conducted by top tier management. The resources required for these tasks include money to fund leadership assessments, time to discuss and identify objectives, and self-reflexive programs to perform a self-assessment. The barrier to implementation of these tasks include the high level of funds required to employ an external assessor. The medium term tasks for the action plan include management staff undertaking leadership workshop training and conducting staff bonding exercises between managers and subordinates to create better management relationships. The time frame is between 6 to 12 months and should be conducted by both top tier and middle tier management. The resources required is the opportunity cost for staff's time out of work money to fund the training program and time to develop the sufficient relationships. The barrier to implementation for this, these tasks include perhaps a lack of staff interest in training and bonding activities. The long-term tasks for the action plan include creating and adopting a company leadership mission statement that encapsulates the ideas of morale and teamwork and developing leaders early by instilling healthy management relationships and encouraging junior organisation members to grow and develop into leaders themselves. The time frame for these tasks should be ongoing and should involve all management levels within the organisation. The resources required are cooperation and dedication to create and follow a mission statement and time to develop young leadership talent. The barriers to implementation of these tasks could include disinterest and ignoring the mission statement and the extensive time frame required.